I think that digital trade is the wave of the future. We see digital trade and digitally delivered services trade growing very fast. In fact, the digitally delivered services trade, meaning things like streaming videos, entertainment, accounting services, backroom, even medical deliv uh, delivery of medic medical services online, growing at 8% per year. That market is now worth 3.8 billion, trillion, sorry, 3.8, almost $4 trillion. And the potential to grow more worldwide is huge. So what we're saying is African countries need to tap into this. We are, Africa has only 1% of that market. So it's a huge opportunity. So what we decided to do is to, to, to help African countries to tap into this, they need both the hardware of digital hardware um, and the backbone connectivity, but they also need the software because you need regulatory systems. So we teamed up, decided to partner with the World Bank to help, we are starting with nine countries, of which Nigeria is one, Mauritius is another, Rwanda, Kenya, and so on, to help them deal with both the hardware and software of the digital so that all the women trading online, all the young people who are trying to do the entertainment services, they can be better assisted to do that. And that's what this project, we believe that the future of trade is digital, it is green, it is services, and Nigeria and African countries must be positioned to tap into this. Definitely, and I'm sure that's why that decision to extend the moratorium on custom duties on cross-border electronic transmissions was uh, taken at that conference. Can you just shed light on the significance of this decision, especially for developing countries? Well, you've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> in Kichi, yes, that is highly significant in, this, in the sense that the extension of the moratorium on customs duties on electronic transmissions, let me put it in layman's terms, is trying to create a digital ecosystem where small and medium enterprises and even large business can function without having to pay so many fees and taxes. So by extending it, we, st we make it possible that SMEs can thrive, uh, young people can develop digital businesses, and they don't have to be involved in paying these digital taxes and fees for a period of time. So that's very pertinent to what we are trying to do to develop digital trade. And that's where the two are connected. And that's why we are very excited. More and more developing countries support the extension because they realize now that digital trade is very important to them. We, we find that women who trade earn almost three times more than women who trade externally, who export, earn almost three times more than women who sell domestically. And that means that if we can encourage more women to export goods, they are going to earn more and their, and their incomes will be higher and their, their families will benefit, even the nation will benefit. So we found that a lot of women are already trading online. They are already involved in digital trade. And so the issue was, is that they encounter barriers, they don't have market information. How can we penetrate more markets, to export more goods to more countries? How do we meet the quality standards again to be able to export? How do we access finance? A perpetual problem. Sometimes you have a very successful woman entrepreneur trading online, but scaling up, she needs additional resources and cannot access them. It's not easy to get loans. Women often face more challenges than men, etc. So when we saw that there are many women in developing countries trading online and meeting these barriers, we teamed up with our offshoot our sister organization, the Inter International Trade Center, to say we'll launch a fund of $50 million to begin with to help these women. So we are going to you know, have a competition in different countries and they can make proposals and women can compete and those who win, they'll be able to get some grant funding from this in order to be able to scale up their businesses, meet those challenges that are lying in their way. And this is, you know, so when the time comes, Nigerian women can also be part of it. Uh, I hope that Nigeria will put up a proposal. The Honorable Minister is already on top of it, so I'm sure she'll be one of the first. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we want to help empower women in trade.
Actually, the WTO is the one promoting this concept, and I'm glad it's taking hold in the world. What do we mean? We find that during the pandemic, many global supply chains exhibited some vulnerability. Many countries were not able to access goods during that time because of what happened. They found that some supply chains were too concentrated in certain countries and geographies. Sometimes it was China, sometimes somewhere else. And they began to say, well, we need to deconcentrate, we need to diversify. But many of them were talking of bringing those supply chains home to their own countries or to friendly countries. So it could be the US or Europe. And at the WTO, we began to say to them, or oh, they would also say, maybe we'll just bring it home or add one more country to China, like Vietnam. And we said, OK, that's not a problem, but we think the world can do better. If we really want to diversify and deconcentrate and build re global resilience, it's better to think of diversifying to many more countries. And this could be a way to bring in countries that didn't benefit so much from the first wave of globalization, who were left on the margin. Why not, if they have the right business environment, diversify your supply chain to them? And you can think of African countries that have attributes where they could diversify. We are calling that re-globalization. It will bring supply chains to those countries. It will include those countries. So at the same time, you're building manufacturing capacity in developing countries that can benefit from this. You're creating new jobs, but you're also including them. And they're young people. And you know we have a lot of young people to employ. So that's the concept of re-globalization, building resilience and inclusivity by decentralizing supply chains. Your first term is nearing. And I know the process for looking for another DG is at the end of the year, I think. Any thoughts of putting yourself out there again? My term is not ending. This is something that has been put out somewhere. I have a year and a half, so I'm not oh. at all thinking. So this is not true. Yeah, something is going around, so forget about it. I'm concentrating on delivering now. So this is not something that is yet in my sights.